Hello fellow HubSpotters, this is Emma with Kiwi Creative, and today we're talking about HubSpot's email subscription types and why they matter. If you have the Starter, Pro, Enterprise, or Legacy Basic tier of Marketing Hub, or you have the Pro or Enterprise tier of CMS Hub, this applies to you. In this video, we'll define subscription types, explain why they're so important and why you should customize them, demonstrate how to actually create and customize different types, and show you how to use them to improve your database. So on to definitions. Subscription types represent the lawful basis to send marketing emails to your contacts. In HubSpot, although it's certainly frowned upon, there is a gray area where you are able to send marketing blasts to contacts that haven't explicitly opted in as long as they're not explicitly opted out. That means that the list you just imported or the folks that just submitted a form, you can email them although they haven't given you permission and you can continue emailing them until they unsubscribe from your CRM. So there is indeed that loophole, but it is not GDR compliant. It doesn't provide a positive user experience for those contacts. It doesn't do your email health any favors. And frankly, it's not very ethical. Enter email subscription types. Though you do get certain subscription types right out of the box based on your hubs, you can update these existing types as well as create additional types based on the types of emails your business needs to send. Examples of common email types are event updates, critical customer alerts, monthly newsletters, promotions. There's not a magic number of types you need to create it's completely contingent on your business process and the type of content you're sending out. So why create all these extra separate types when you know you get one or two right off the bat? Bottom line is compliance. You're playing by the rules. This approach also gives your contacts a choice about the type of content they want to receive from you. This can prevent them from opting out of your entire database later on and reporting your emails as spam. Also, these choices can indicate what they're interested in and highlight the fit between them and your business. Conversely, you are not required to create additional types, okay? But if you don't at least present the options or run an opt-in email campaign, number one, you're leaving your HubSpot portal non-compliant. We already don't like that. Two, your contacts could become annoyed with the email messages that don't pertain to them and they'll opt out completely. Three, you miss the opportunity to gather insight into what contacts are interested. So let's get into actually how to really create and customize these types and where you'll use them. So in order to get to your email subscription types, you can start on any page of your portal you like, and you'll notice we're in our demo portal. And I will visit the settings cog in the top right hand corner per usual. In the left hand column, we're going to want to scroll down to marketing and open up that menu and select email. Along the tabs on the top, we're gonna to pick subscription types. Now you'll notice our demo account has those out of the box ones we referred to already, okay? Now, if I wanna add an additional one, I can certainly do that in create subscription type. If you don't have GDPR tools enabled, this pop-up window here will be shorter. Uh, it won't ask you for purpose of subscription or method of communication. Um, should you like to enable GDPR tools, I will link that below the video. So in this instance, I'm going to specify as required what English, uh, what language, and I will select English. Subscription type can be event updates, one of those common ones I referred to earlier. And here is a best practice. Be as descriptive as possible when writing your description for this type, um, especially to include the cadence. So in this instance, we could say as needed um, event updates, um, like, you know, some of your names. So um, Kiwi Creative Webinars and trade shows or whatever is appropriate. The important part is to include monthly newsletter weekly blog updates, things like that. How often can this contact expect to receive communication? Um, that way, when they're presented with the menu, we'll see in a moment, they'll be able to make a discerning decision of, do I wanna get this email monthly or weekly or daily? They can specify there. 
Here, of course, we can specify purpose of subscription, method of communication. Here's your preview. This is what the contact will see. I'll go ahead and create that. I can also edit existing ones. You'll see this is what's out of the box. I can specify maybe this is that newsletter I was talking about, right? Newsletter, and this can be monthly, e, uh, monthly newsletter containing company updates and industry trends. Of course, this could be different for everyone, right? You'll notice too, you can add a language variant. So if you are presenting emails in other languages, you can also present this subscription type a la carte menu in different languages. One thing I would recommend is don't bank on HubSpot's translation, similar to Google Translate, right? Um, it's best practice, of course, to have a native speaker or a very fluent speaker, um, be able to provide that copy and, and double check it for you. In this case, I will save, and you'll now notice I have three different subscription types. All right, now that we have them, let's see how your contact will see them. Okay, there's a few different ways that contacts could run into this list of options. The most common being um, the footer of an email. So I already have an email here. We'll pull up. Here's a test. Um, this is simply in the preview, but we're going to go ahead and click Manage Preferences. And this is what they will see, right? This is an unformatted, uncustomized um, landing page here. Uh, and you'll notice here, there's our description as needed. Monthly, they can specify, I don't want that, I don't want that. There is, of course, still the option to unsubscribe from everything. We're, we've never taken that away, uh, but we're just giving them the option to stay in those buckets that they'd like. So kind of an example of a more customized version is something like this. This can be done in your design tools portion. Um, and obviously being a demo account, I kind of have some silly examples, um, but I will link a how-to guide of how to customize this below the video. And you'll see this can be branded, uh, formatted differently. Again, same exact options. Well, maybe if I refresh, it'll be same exact options and they can still unsubscribe. Another place to use these email subscription types uh, to benefit your database is in forms. I'll pull a form example I have here. Actually refresh it this time. So of course, when we're building a form, we have our usual info that we can ask in our left-hand column. Scroll on down under other form options. If we go ahead and open that, you'll notice we have this GDPR options, right? If we open that drop down, there's three different things here. Consent checkbox for communication, consent checkbox for communication and processing and legitimate interest. In this example, you can only pick one ever, but in this example, I'll pick this first one. And now you'll see this big block of copy just popped up out of nowhere. Let's go ahead and click this. This is the standard language that's set in your account default. This can be updated as a whole for your entire account or per form, okay? In this instance, we'll update it per form. I don't need any of this for my example, right? I'm gonna say, uh, nope, nope, nope. And you'll notice as I'm deleting, that shrunk to just this singular checkbox, okay? Now here's where we get into subscription types. You'll notice here, sales email is kind of the default. I can instead say, hey, form, um, you submitted a contact us form, you need to opt in to say, yes, I will receive these type of emails. You can make this required, right? So in order to send them the automated confirmation email, they need to have been opted in. Here's where we can do it. Another example is say this is a support form. You can present the option um, not required. Hey, I would also like to receive other communications. So we're giving them that option. Would you also like marketing emails, right? Would you also like event updates? You can only pick one subscription type here. So be thoughtful about where we want them to opt in or where we're presenting them the chance to opt in. The final way to present these options is by visiting the subscriptions tab. We've been in types. We're going to visit subscriptions. And you'll notice down here we have a double opt-in campaign. I will link uh, additional information on how to get that running. 
Um, but that's the third and kind of final way you can present that to your contacts. So as you can see with this demo, we talked mostly about why you do something versus how. Um, customizing these email subscription types is a very low effort, uh, minimally technical way to really um, improve your database, database hygiene and improve your user's experience. So get in there and click around. and Think about the types of emails you're sending people that you can present them in that a la carte menu to really customize the content they receive from you.